Hi everyone, it's Tracy. Today I wanted to do a review of the Lakota Sweat Lodge cards. I haven't seen a whole lot about these cards um, anywhere on the internet, and they're kind of expensive for a, a deck of cards in a book. Uh, even on Amazon they're close to $30. So I wanted to do a review in case anybody was interested in seeing what these cards look like and how they might work and what the book looks like. It is published by a company called Destiny Books. I've never heard of that before. Uh, here's the back. You can see the retail on it is, is $34.95. It's one of those, it's a really nice hard book, box that slides open. And you can see that then it has inside it a book, which is Good. It's a good sized book, about 172 pages long, and then you have a little plastic insert tray where we have, I believe there are 50 cards, yes there are 50 cards that go with this set. And it really is an oracle set, and it's an oracle set with a system as opposed to an oracle set that's just kind of a... a a group of cards that have meanings. This one has sort of a system to it, not a full system like you would see in maybe uh, Chronicles of Destiny or The Dreams of Gaia tarot, but it, it does have a system. The reason I picked up this deck was because I actually did get a card reading from a woman who said she was a Lakota and she used these cards and it's the only card reading I had ever gotten in person. And it was the very first time I had seen the cards. I'd never seen them anywhere before. I thought, oh, I'm going to get a card reading. I'll probably recognize the deck that she's using, but I didn't. And then after the reading, it was a really great reading. And after the reading, I kind of went out in search of the, the cards that she had used. And, and this is what I found. This is the deck. So let's, let's start by looking at the book. The book, I have read um, all of the book, except for I haven't read every single card meaning, but I have read all of the beginning part of the book. And let me start by saying that it says it's the spiritual teachings of the Sioux, and it talks about Sweat Lodge. I cannot tell you whether the information in this book is truly Lakota Sweat Lodge information or, and Sioux information or not. Um, all I can tell you is whether or not I liked the cards in the book and the system. Uh, there is a there's a review on on Amazon that claims that this is not uh, accurate to sue to actual sue practice and religion, and I can't speak to that. It was uh, published in 1994, so it's about 20 years old. It's been out there for a while, but again, like I said, I haven't seen a whole lot of it. We go through. And I have kind of marked up the book a little bit. There's a preface. Uh, he points out the this is written by Chief Archie Fire Lame De Chief Archie Fire Lame Deer. That's the the Native American and Helen or Helene Starkus Sarkis Sarkis. Sorry, sorry for butchering your name. Um, they do say that it is a personal tool for inner growth and transformation, which I really like because that's primarily what I use cards for. I don't use them to tell the future, really. I'm really looking for personal growth with my cards. They do have a disclaimer in here that these traditions represent the unique heritage of the lame deer and quick bear families and thus may be different from teachings based on anthropological research or from any other native teachers. So they do claim, state in the preface very clearly that this is their system and, you know, take it or leave it. It's their system and this is what they're, they're out to teach. We have an introduction. We have a, quite a few poems in here, like the Song of the Black-Tailed Deer. They talk about the sacred Inipi, and please, I apologize if I'm butchering the Native American words. Uh, there is in the back, I found it very interesting, in the back, there is a pronunciation guide that should help you with the American Native American pronunciations, but I also haven't tried to, to incorporate that yet. So it does talk a little bit about the purification ceremony, the spirit gods and the supernaturals. We have a wheel of the lodge here that looks very similar to the medicine wheel that I've seen in some other Native American traditions in the cards. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a student of Native American religions or practices, but I have got 
several other Native American themed card decks that I have I've gone through. It talks about the different groups of cards. Well, the creation myth, the associated spirits, and the subordinate spirits. And this is what you'll actually see in the card groupings that you have. And the supernatural spirits. Did I get into that? And I'm not even going to... This is a like a cheat sheet of the cards, what their name is. That has the Native American word, the uh, English word that... A, is supposed to correspond and then a, a one keyword card meaning for those cards and you have the 16 great mysteries which I think is the one thing that I, I found kind of odd about this this set is they talk about the 16 great mysteries and they have cards numbered from 0 to 16 uh, that's 17 that's not 16 and then we have the supernaturals the elements of the sweat lodge and then that's it those are the different groupings of cards. Notes on divination, how to use the cards, uh, and then a bunch of spreads. So it talks about, it, it gives you guided meditations that you can use before you use the cards. Uh, weekly card meditation. We have a new moon meditation, a full moon meditation, and then we have the spreads four directions spread, an elemental spread, which I'll, I'll give a go with that at the end of this video, having, having a go with that. Um, the Inipi spread, grandfather's breath spread, grandmother's path spread, tree of life spread, morning star spread, which uh, as I was reading through it, this one doesn't require a question. And I believe this is the spread that the the woman who gave me the reading use because it's a very good very good general sort of layout uh, if you don't necessarily have a particular question in mind and it uses the the planets as the positions and see so it goes into a good bit of detail about each position and what it's supposed to mean and then we have the card meeting card meanings and it just goes through them in order they all have numbers on them in addition to the names there's a little um, a little bit of prose here as though the card were speaking to you. Uh, then it has an information about the tradition behind the, the card name and the card meaning. Then we have a sort of divinatory meaning of the card and a meditation about that card. And it goes through, the book goes through and does that for every single card in the deck. And the, they're really the I'm not so hung up on the traditions because I'm not looking to really learn Native American tradition from these cards. I'm looking to, again, as the, the authors intended, I'm looking to, to it for personal growth and transformation. So I'm not uh, that concerned about the, the actual tradition behind it. But let's have a look at the cards. I've got them in order. And I'm not going to make any attempt to pronounce the Native American names. But they do go in the order that we talked about. So the first 17 are the 16 great mysteries. We have a sun card. I really like the artwork on this, these cards. It's um, There is a border on the back. There's a border around the front. You have a the Native American name and the, the English name. There are these boxes. I'm not quite sure why they're there. I thought they might change as you changed from... The 16 mysteries to the supernaturals or something like that but they don't but and then the artworks in the middle it's it's very attractive and the number down here mother earth wind satisfaction and passion and, and I, I haven't used these enough to understand why we have two people whose bottom halves are in logs and why that corresponds to satisfaction and passion. I really do like it when the images on the card tell the pic tell the story in, a, in an easily accessible way. Here we have thunder beings, the bison nation, man, bear, the four directions, the whirlwind, 
Spirit of Man, Ghost, Intellect. Love all the animals that he has around him. The Material, Woman with Two Faces. That's the, the that ends the, the first six or 17, the 16 Great Mysteries. Now we've moved into the Supernaturals. Woman with Two Faces. Spider. I actually love spiders. I know that's kind of funny, but if I find one of a spider, something like that, outside my house with a giant web, I name them and go and visit them every day. If they're inside the house, I'm sorry. They came into my sacred space and they have to die. <laughs> Old woman sorceress. Goddess of water. Old man sorcerer of the north. Eight Directions of the Wind, and that is the image from the front of the book. Oops, sorry. The front of the book and the box. Then we have another wind. There's a lot of wind in this deck. Wind uh, means change and movement and that sort of thing, and, and it can be positive and it can be negative. I have discovered that these cards, I think they would be great for reading for other people because a lot of other people wouldn't see the shadow side of the card but it is there and you can either choose to read it or not to read it depending on you know situation position question that sort of thing so i think this would be a really good deck to use for other people who maybe weren't as comfortable with some of those scary images now that one is a little bit scary whirlwind and storm you see a, a funnel cloud or a tornado but it's coming out of a a woman and it's in the ocean it's really pretty cool cloud. Yeah, you have a little bit of a thunderstorm there. Lightning. Nope. Sorry. Cloud. Starting with card number 25. Cloud is where we move into the elements of the sweat lodge. And the rest of the cards are related to the elements of the sweat lodge. West black. North red. East yellow. That's beautiful. South white. Boy, he's looking straight at you, isn't he? Then we have the sweat lodge itself. And they talk about the construction of the sweat lodge and what the shape it's supposed to be in the book. So you can kind of see that, yeah, that's what you would expect a sweat lodge to look like. You know, I live far away from any Native American influences, so I have no idea what these things look like. Sacred pipe. The Tree of Life, Morning Star, Grandfather's Breath, which they explain in the book. That's when you go in the sweat lodge and the, the stones are all hot and they throw water on them to create steam. Sacred Herbs, and I love this. It's, um, I believe, cedar, sage, and sweet grass. Prayer ties, sacred songs, the fire pit, all my relations. That looks like a very positive card with all that happy color in it. Sacred mound, water, air, fire and earth, and it does use the same elementals that we're used to. Then we have the swan, grandmother, moon time, the mole, crying for a dream. So that's what the cards look like. Let's give them a shuffle and see, I haven't shuffled these yet. We'll see how they shuffle. Um, Let's give them a shuffle. They are a bit thick. Uh, they're not thin like the old U Llewellyn cardstock. They're sort of medium. They're not as stiff as, say, the Pamela Coleman Smith commemorative. And they're not as stiff as some of the other oracle cards out there, the Hay House oracle cards, the Blue Angel oracle cards, that um, you sometimes have a bit of trouble shuffling. But I don't feel like I'm getting these very well shuffled that way, doing the riffle shuffle. 
So if I'm going to pull some cards, I will probably do a little different shuffle than I normally do because I normally just shuffle and shuffle and shuffle and then pull the like the four cards from the top. But since I don't feel like I'm getting these shuffled very well, I think I'll do a little bit differently. All right, let's find that spread. It was the elemental spread. The elemental spread, you have earth, air, fire, and water. Earth, air, fire, and water are the sustainers of life. Through these, we're given what we need to live. Sometimes in the hurry and pressure of our, sometimes in the hurry and pressure of our days, we forget to take care of our needs and an imbalance occurs. This imbalance impacts us in subtly yet pervasive ways. Use the element. Using the elemental spread allows you to look at your relationship with the four cornerstones of life. By repeating the spread periodically, one may come to recognize the shifts of attention through which rebalancing occurs. So we will pull four cards and see where we go. So we'll start with what came first. It was earth, air, fire, and water. So we'll go earth, air, fire, and water. Let's see what we have here. Okay, earth. The earth brings forth great abundance for nourishment. Wherever on the surface of this great globe one lives, all nutrients are available through various forms. Are you, are you nourishing yourself in all ways, or is a vital nutrient missing from your diet or life? The card drawn for this position addresses an area in, or manner by, which you may increase the health and vitality of your body, mind, and spirit. Yeah, I am struggling a little bit with the way they've structured the sentences, but it, it gets it across. So what have we got there? We have got stone, which is, seems very earth-related. That's card number four. Let's go to card number four. Let's see what it has to say about four. Stone. I'm not going to read the little... Let's go to the, the card itself. Let's see what it says about the card. This card is telling to you to look at your foundation and take steps to create balance in your life. What do you need to bring into your life to be more emotionally balanced? Use the wisdom of the stone to bring harmony to your surroundings. The stresses in your life may be tilting your sense of balance. Examine the influences that create stress and find ways to minimize them. Okay. So it looks like um, I might need some balance there. Then the second one is air, which, <laughs> how on earth is that possible? In the air position, I actually push, pulled air. Air is the most immediate sustainer of life. We take in the fresh gift of green of the green exhalation. We take in the, the fresh gift of the green exhalation and life force with each breath. Are you able to inhale this gift deeply into your body? So let's look at card 42. Forty-two means breathe in with gratitude and joy all that life has to offer you. Become conscious of the life-giving properties of the air surrounding you. So apparently I need to work on my breathing, which I would say is actually very, very true because I have not been doing my breathing meditations lately the way I'm supposed to, and I need to start back. And in the fire position, if I have fire here, I'm going to flip. Ah, oh, I do! I have the fire pit! Number 38. Just as the sweat lodge ceremony begins at the fire pit with the energy of a flame, your new endeavors begin with your motivation. The metal and attentiveness generated by personal motivation carry you forward to completion. And then the, the position, I'm sorry, I think I skipped that. Fire consumes, consumes and restores, leaving fresh new ground and energy for growth. So it looks like I need to grow... 
in, in my personal motivation, which is also quite true. I need, I need to get my butt in gear and get some things done that I've been putting off. So it's pretty true that here. And then in wind, I have the morning star. See, see, oh, excuse me, water. The water position. Water is vital to the homeostasis of body, regulating blood pressure and waste elimination and maintaining cellular integrity. It's also the flow of emotion, of creativity, of life. The message of this card offers insight into the best way for you to direct your life sustaining creative flow and avoid stagnation. And I pulled 33, the morning star. And you can see, I'm, I am not able to read these cards intuitively. I can't just really look at this and, and understand what it means. I do need the book to, to help me get the insight out of these cards. Okay, Morning Star. A light has appeared beneath the darkness to illuminate your way. The light shines upon you and upon those areas of your life that have darkened your journey. It is time to come out of the darkness and allow support, guidance, and love. You can see the brilliance ahead of you as you walk with confidence and trust in the future. Let the morning star shine into your consciousness, and you will be able to meet the present and future with wonder. So that sounds to me that like it's similar to the star card in, in, a, in a Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. So I'm still on the the jury's still out about these cards. I think they might be very helpful for personal transformation, but it's not something where I'm going to be able to just sit down, pull a few cards and really understand what they mean. I would have to pull some cards, have a look at the book, maybe do some journaling about the cards to, to find out what that means to me internally, because I do much better. Me personally, I do much better uh, really um, internalizing card meanings by writing, starting a writing process and writing things down. Uh, looks like I am also losing the light, so we will wrap up here and have a great day.